This video is about two limits involving trig functions that turn out to be very useful. Namely, the limit as theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta and the limit as theta goes to zero of cosine theta minus one over theta. These limits turn out to have really nice simple answers as long as we keep theta in radians, not degrees. Let's consider the limit on the left first. That's the limit as theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta. Notice that we can't just evaluate this limit by plugging in zero for theta, because as theta goes to zero, sine theta in the numerator also goes to zero, and theta itself goes to zero, so we end up with a zero over zero indeterminate form. We can, however, build up some evidence of what this limit by, might be by using a calculator and a table of values or by looking at a graph. So here's the theta axis and here's the y axis. And you can see that as theta goes to zero from either the right or the left, it's looking like the y value is going to one. The second limit here on the right is also a zero over zero indeterminate form. Since as theta goes to zero, cosine theta goes to one, so cosine theta minus one goes to zero. But again, looking at the graph, we have some evidence to suggest that as theta goes to zero, our expression is also going to zero. These graphs provide strong evidence, but graphs can be misleading, and they're no substitute for a rigorous proof. So for a pretty cool geometric and algebraic proof of these facts, please see the proof video for this section. The fact that the limit as theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta is one is really handy when you want to approximate sine theta. Because intuitively, this is saying that sine theta is approximately equal to theta itself when theta is near zero because the ratio is approximately one. So if I want to approximate sine of this value of theta without a calculator, I can use that fact and say that the sine of 0 0.01769 is going to be approximately equal to 0 0.01769. This is an important time to remind you that when we're doing these limits, we're assuming that theta is in radians. If it's not in radians, we won't get this nice limit of one here. So that's our approximation, and we can check it on the calculator, and I actually get an exact value of this number up to 10 decimal places. So as you can see, this is a really good approximation. We can use this same limit fact again in the next example to calculate this complicated limit as x goes to zero, the limit of tan of seven x over sine of four x. So when I see tangents and sines in an expression, I'm always tempted to rewrite things in just in terms of sine and cosine. So I'm gonna do that first. So I'm gonna rewrite tangent as, as sine over cosine that's still divided by sine of 4x. And now I'm going to flip and multiply to get sine of 7x over cosine of 7x times 1 over sine of 4x. Now, intuitively, if x is near 0, and therefore 7x and 4x are also near 0, then sine of 7x is approximately equal to 7x. And sine of 4x is approximately equal to 4x. So intuitively, this limit should be pretty much the same thing as the limit as x goes to 0 of 7x over cosine 7x times 4x. And canceling the x's, this is just the same as 7 fourths times the limit of 1 over cosine 7x. Since cosine of 7x is going to 1, this should just be 7 fourths. So this is the intuitive 
approach, let me also give you a more rigorous approach. So more rigorously, I'm going to rewrite this limit by multiplying by 7x over 7x and by multiplying by 4x over 4x. That hasn't changed my expression. I'm just multiplying by 1 in fancy forms. But this is really useful because if I regroup here and write the sine 7x over the 7x times the 1 over cosine 7x, now I'm going to write the 4x over the sine 4x and I'm still left with a 7x from the top and a 4x from the bottom. Here I can cancel out those x's and I can notice that this limit here, as x goes to 0, 7x is going to 0, so sine 7x over 7x is just going to be equal to 1. And similarly, as x goes to 0, 4x is going to 0, so the limit of 4x over sine 4x is the reciprocal of 1. It's also 1. And finally, this limit in the middle here, as x goes to 0, 7x is going to 0, so cosine of 7x is going to 1. And everything in the world is going to 1 except the 7 fourths, so this limit is 7 fourths. In this video, we found that the limit as theta goes to 0 of sine theta over theta is equal to 1. And the limit as theta goes to 0 of cosine theta minus 1 over theta is equal to 0. There's a nice proof of these facts in a later video for this section.